Good evening. Hello. Welcome. Yes. <laughs> Even then on another floor, they're so loud. Hey guys, hope you all are doing well. Happy Sunday. Are you shopping? Oh, sure, are you sure, online sure. shopping during Sunday school? I just thought about it. <laughs> That's, it. That's cool. Okay. Hope y'all are having a good afternoon. It's a pretty day out. Yet again, we are inside. Why are we inside today? Uh, I just worked out that way. <laughs> hey, Kayla. I was just thinking about you earlier today and wondering how you were doing. Um, so it's good to see you pop on here. How's I know you're teaching and working at the same time, so that's, I think that's what crossed my mind. I was thinking about Jacob. Hey, Jennifer. I got to see Jennifer this morning. It was it was a great day in church today. I just thought saw so many um, so many more families that are coming back mm -hmm. every week. We see more and more of you that we've missed for so much higher than I was wondering the same thing. Sit up straight, Tim. Sit up, Sash. <laughs> I'm sitting all the way back. That's what it is. You have a bunch of schoolwork to do on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Is it your schoolwork or Jacob's? Because aren't you? <laughs> I think but she. I thought she was taking classes at one time as well. That's it. Yes, it really <laughs> was a great day. And Jennifer Breedlove, I did get to see you. She looks so pretty in her mustard yellow. I told Ella... I have never been mustard? a big mustard yellow is the color. So my correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's right. Um, I've never been a big fan of mustard. yellow, like as a um, fashion mustard. color, you know. But the mustard yellow, which is more of a warm yellow. Okay, see that pillow over there? French see is the mustard. Pumpkins? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's more of a. I like mustard and hot deep, dogs yellow like a golden yellow and I love those warm colors oh your school work okay well ugh, that's even worse I guess and we'll be praying for you that you'll get it all done Once, oh no not again Ooh, are you really again. gonna yawn again must be something yeah. about the air down here I don't know Maybe that's we need to have the air quality tested pull your phone out and see if it tells you if the air quality is poor I don't think it works. It's, it's your phone's been doing that. I think the our phone did an update, and now our weather app is like telling us every little detail about the weather. Jer that's right. She did tell me that Jeremy is her wardrobe designer. Really? I know, right? Hidden mm -hmm. talents there. That that's pretty cool. Tacos. I like tacos. <laughs> I don't know, always time for tacos, right? Taco Sunday. <laughs> Sometimes we have Taco Sunday. We go eat Mexican. Yeah, but Jeremy, we, we did not know that. So, yeah, he did well. Maybe I'll, uh, we'll have to get him to give us some tips. <laughs> Fall fashion tips with Jeremy. Fall fashion tips. He said it comes from growing up with two sisters. Okay. Well, I get that. That makes sense. <laughs> You got it all done last night and this morning. Two more weeks and these two classes. Of, of those two classes. And then you are only have eight left. Well, you know what? You're getting it done. Good for you, girl. That's a lot to work and to be a mama and to go to school. That's a lot. But when it's behind you, you'll be so happy that you did, that you pushed through. And um, it'll be worth it. So hang in there. But yeah. It was <laughs> Am I gonna have to take your phone away? Now you're looking at football scores. Uh, since that guy Nolly. said something. Obviously y'all know Tim's not teaching today. <laughs> <laughs> I get a He's break this like, week, so I'm just, hey, what's I'm just up, enjoying <laughs> I'm enjoying the break. Somebody else had to study this time. Yeah, he's way too chill today. <laughs> Oh, well, 
I guess, you know, all good things must come to an end. Now y'all get to listen to me. But you still are having a hard time staying awake, huh? I didn't bring the coffee down here with me. You were upstairs this morning in the balcony. I don't, could, from where I could tell, it looked like the balcony was pretty full this morning too. Well, I know the main was floor full was, full. yeah. Yeah. Main floor was definitely As full. Social distancing goes. Yeah. That's what Pastor said. We'll start sticking them to the wall. And I was like, well, you know, it, yeah, it might come down to that, which is good. That's a good, good problem to have. People are coming mm -hmm. back and it's wonderful to see that. Mm -hmm. And things are going to start resuming at White Oak. That's one announcement that we have to make. I was hoping we get some, maybe I'll wait until everybody gets in here. I can repeat it, I guess. Um, but starting October 18th, which you said was three weeks from today. Can I look at my phone? Yeah, yeah. it feels like four weeks. Pretty sure it's three weeks from today. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. One, two, three. All right. So three weeks from today, then uh, we are going to be resuming Sunday school in room 201 in our regular classroom up in the kids' church room. And um, we will also be having classes for the children ages. I think there's going to be one for three to six year olds and one for seven to 12 year olds. Um, we will be following some guidelines. There will be some things that we'll have to put in place um, so that we can all come together and and have those Sunday school classes because they are considered a smaller group in a smaller space. Yeah, you guys are there. In a smaller space, you know, we have to be respectful of each other and um, the leadership has met and has decided that the best option would be um, for everyone to wear a mask up in the kids zone area. So we actually, our room is, part of the kids zone area so um you know up while you're in that area and then you come into class and we're gonna spread everybody out and so um but they have asked that we would do that just so that we can continue to meet and that Sunday school would not bring a reproach on the church I mean we don't want you know Sunday school to happen and then somebody shut you know the church down. shut the church down because of Sunday school was you know, irresponsible or something happened. We don't want that to come back on, on us. So we'll do our part. And um, the good news is that we get to come together in person. And so that's exciting. So October the 18th, live in the house of the Lord. <laughs> uh, Not live here, live there, which, which we will, we did talk about that. Um, we are going to figure out a way to still do some sort of a live stream um mm -hmm. and i think right now that it will be on our main page right on our page on our mm -hmm. personal page right, right, right. um once a week so we will give you more information on that when i say that i just want to throw up because it makes me nervous <laughs> it doesn't make him nervous but it's something we've been talking about for a long time it's just like I'm okay talking to y'all, you know, it's, I don't know. <laughs> Even though this goes on YouTube and can potentially reach the whole world, I, you know, I don't think about it like that when I'm sitting down here talking to our, to my phone. I just feel like, um, that we're just in our little Sunday school class, so. Still trying to figure out why you look taller than me. I think it's because the camera's am. to the side. <laughs> we did talk about that last week, how it goes downhill. Um, we really have something that we want to give away. That looks much better. It does. You grew. Now you're showing my office space. Oops. Sorry. Molly don't have no clothes on back there. I got to hide her. <laughs> Molly, I hold the dot. The, what do you call those things? Dress form. Dress form. That's it. <laughs> Molly, I got to put some clothes on Molly. She's going to be in the shot now. She's got clothes on. She's got a pink something other and a silver belt. We can dress her she has up. Has a really small head though. <laughs> we gonna have to dress her up. Oh yeah, we do. We have something we want to give away. I've been like sitting on this news and giveaway and. <sighs> mm mm mm. I 
obviously five o'clock was still in your nap time, huh? I ain't no nap today. <laughs> Ended up working this afternoon. Well, uh, things you wanted to do, you should tell them what you did. Go ahead and talk. <laughs> <laughs> I think the fire pit looks much better now. It does. He's working really hard on that. No, I'm done with it now. No more. <laughs> Finished. Well, that's good. Yeah, he built a fire pit for us. I think you told him that, though. I think you may mention that. That we... We've... Gotten to enjoy it, what, once, twice? Twice. Yeah, and then we had all that rain, so he worked on it today and... Trying to make it drain better. Yeah. It's holding too much water. So, maybe we can have a fire tonight. We shall see. Maybe the wood won't be wet. Wood's probably still wet, but I gotta start a log, so we're gonna okay. cheat a little bit. Blow it up. <laughs> I feel like I was gonna tell him something else. Oh yes, I know what it was. So I did find out about the coffee and donuts. And so sadly, there will not be any coffee and donuts in the foyer when Sunday school starts no back coffee. up for now anyway. So we're trying to figure this out. We were thinking we could do like, what is it called? Contactless, right? And that non communal. Non communal um, coffee and Danish, maybe in our class, I might still have to run that by. But all it means is everything is individually yeah. wrapped, so the the Danishes are in their own package, and the coffee yeah. you'll have to do like a Keurig, like a Keurig or something. With the the creamers, mm -hmm. individual creamers, yeah. individual packs of sugar. That's all. So that's what we were thinking, and I said, can't be anything anybody shares. Yeah. So if you or anyone you know of. <laughs> has a Keurig that they're not using or that they would want to donate to um, our Sunday school class or, you know, just has one they're not using and just would we let us borrow it. We didn't get that cleared it. yet, but okay. Yeah, we didn't get it cleared yet, but so, you know, <laughs> we'll get it cleared first. Um, but in the meantime, maybe we'll think toward that. If you have a Keurig that you're not using or you know somebody who might have one that they would be willing to donate or, I mean, maybe we could... You know, purchase it if it's not. Well, they cost. They they run up close to a hundred dollars. A new one. Well, I thought they'd come down. I knew when they were when they were well, maybe they first come out they were real, real, Mr. real high. Yeah. I think you get a pretty cheap one now. Mr. Coffee might bucks. have a Mr. Coffee might have a cheaper one. Yeah, if we can find a cheaper one, maybe. Anyway, that's our thought right now on that because I I did mention in the meeting how important that was that coffee and and donuts to the journey. So. We'll see if we can still do something along those lines. Yeah. We'll go ahead and take prayer requests tonight. Does anybody have any prayer requests? Anything going on? Any praise reports? Good stuff yeah. going on? Hear the good stuff. <laughs> Walmart has a smaller version for 59 Okay, good. That's good to know. Um. So yeah, at least we got something. All right, well, I, I have had mine for probably, gosh, four or five years. And I got it um, Black Friday. And I know I paid $100, like $99 for it then on Black Friday. So mm. that was probably one that, if you don't suck, I'm going to start. <clears throat> you're welcome. <laughs> what can I say except you're welcome? You have that song in my head again. You're welcome. I wonder if anybody knows what that's from. Probably not. I don't know. We got some with kids on here. <laughs> All right. If anybody doesn't have any prayer requests, we're going to go ahead and pray and get started. You have any prayer requests? Um, yeah. Pray for me. <laughs> Today, is, yeah. Mm -hmm. As I do this, I, I feel very... After following your lead. It's hard. Pray, pray. For sure, yeah. Hmm. You got a few that I've heard mentioned that are having that battle now. Yeah, definitely will be praying for him. I know I'm still going to hear Pastor do an update on Chris Henderson. Did you? They gave him up, but he is doing better. He is uh, progressing, I guess you could say. Okay, good. That's he good didn't news. say a lot, but I mean, he said he was progressing. So That's great. Moving in the right He's, direction. Yeah, because last Sunday they didn't know right. if he was going to make, make it. it yeah. So that's that's great. Yep, 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 yep. 
Wonderful. Well, glad to hear. And of course, you all know that we're we're in the middle of this fast, so. Um, May. Ah. Oh, okay. Thanks, Sarah. Mr. Hopper having surgery on Friday for his knee. We will definitely be praying for him. He was. I think I remember hearing that he was having trouble with his knee. I think he told us that. Yeah, he told me last time I saw him. Yeah. So we will be. We'll lift him up in prayer, and you keep us posted on him too, um, if you can. Good to see you on here. Welcome back. I know you guys have had a little getaway. We missed y'all, but I know that was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get away, get away, get away. All right, let's pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you, Lord, for our time together, Lord. I pray that you'll bless of it, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just be here in a strong and mighty way that you anoint us, Lord, to speak your word, God, Lord, that you will use us tonight, God. We pray over these special requests, Lord, the ones that are fighting sickness and disease, Father, Lord, the ones that have surgeries upcoming, God, the ones that are, um, you know, just need your comfort and strength and peace in these times, God. We pray that you're all over these situations, God, that you will move, God, that your Holy Spirit will be there to bring comfort and joy and peace in the midst of the trials and tribulations and suffering, Lord. I pray that you'll be with all of us, God. Lord, let us just look to you and be strengthened by the might of your word, God, and find joy in our salvation in you, God. We just thank you and worship you for everything you are and you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. We're going to do this again. Sure. Now at the end. It's up to you. All right. Stay tuned to the end. We're going to have this giveaway. Okay. And will you, you be thinking about it? Like how you want to do it? Okay. If you want to spend oh. it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll be thinking about that. All right. Well, we've been um, talking about, or Tim's been teaching on the armor of God. And um, I guess for the last five or six weeks, I think. I think that you told Chill, us. I yeah. Breastplate. <laughs> I think that's right. Yeah. So six weeks. Okay. Yeah. So for six weeks, he's been teaching on that and just did a fantastic job. And um, we just really didn't know, you know, it kind of ended that last week and really didn't know what direction to go in. And um, we've just been praying about it this week. And I just felt, still felt very drawn to Ephesians. And, um, and then Pastor Roger preached this morning and basically like I feel like I'm just gonna like you know, everything that he when I was going through my notes there, I was just thinking, Wow, he he basically went through a lot of this this morning that it'll be a good refresher or um if you weren't able to catch this morning's message, maybe you haven't heard some of this. But just going along with um, the armor of God, I just kind of felt like we still weren't finished there. I told him, I, I feel like we need to stay there for a little while. There was just like more that, um, I don't know, just like some unfinished business there. And so this morning, as I was thinking about it and praying about it, I just heard in my spirit battle plan. What's the battle plan? And so it really made me think, you know, we have this, we've been learning about the armor for six weeks. Um, and you know, now that we have learned how to be equipped against the enemy, you know, what, what is the battle plan? And so that's what I'm going to talk about for a few minutes, um, this evening and stop looking at my notes. You're making me nervous. Oh, you're not looking at <laughs> I thought you were looking at I'm really nervous to follow him. He did such a good job oh, the last few weeks. And so... Um, but anyway, I want to start in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. You want me to read it? Why don't you? Why don't you? <laughs> you can help me. Why are you so you nervous? You're making me nervous. I don't know that you are. You didn't bring your Bible. It's right there. 10, chapter 10, verse 3. Yes. It's hard to find the verses. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Um, verse 4. Oh. Two. For weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Okay. I just hold it like that. All right, so... 
our weapons are not carnal. You know, we learned there that, um, you know, our, our battle is, is a spiritual battle, right? And our weapons, um, well, let's turn it off. For we walk, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are carnal. Yeah, I think I got my scriptures mixed up. Okay, let me start over. <laughs> right, because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Right, exactly. Um, so, I wanted to talk a little bit. I don't know why, but like, um, yeah, there you go. Am I, me, I'm sorry, me there you go. I'm nervous over here. Um, that, you know, if, when you think about going into battle, and you think about, um, you know, when when you're getting equipped and, and prepared for battle, you know, your your mind is, is focused on, you know, what you're going to accomplish. And I was just thinking about, and I had heard this somewhere this week, that, you know, if you knew that someone was planning an attack on you, how would you be preparing yourself? And... So I thought about that. I was thinking, you know, if you knew that somebody was planning to attack you, like they were watching you and they were listening to your conversations and they were tracking your every move and you found out that they knew where you lived and they knew your name and, you know, they had all this information on you and then they, then you found out that they not only knew your name and all this information on you, but they were, they knew your your spouse and they knew your spouse's weaknesses and they had just really been studying your spouse's weakness and where where to really get them and then you found out that not only do they know your weakness and your spouse and they were planning an attack against the two of you but you also knew that they had attacks planned against your children too and that they were watching your children and they were you know seeing what areas they were weak in and they were you know really studying how they could could really come into your home and wreak havoc on your home. If you knew that you had an enemy out there that was warring against you and just really just had this attack plan against you, what would be your stance? What would be your battle plan? Would you just be kind of like sitting around ho-hum? Well, whatever, I'm not really worried about it. You know, I'll think about that when the time comes. Yeah. You know, and that just wouldn't really just like hit me this week that we need a battle plan. Because you know what? We do have an enemy that's doing that. Mm -hmm. And that's where I got off. That was not supposed to be my first scripture. First scripture is 1 Peter 5, 8. So, 1 Peter, yeah, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8. That's verse why you had the little loopy arrows. Yes, that's exactly right. And I didn't see my loopy ears. Okay. So, verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So, we have an adversary, the devil, and he is seeking about like a roaring lion. He is looking to devour us. He's searching and the Bible tells us to be sober and to be vigilant, to be on guard, to be watchful. I think I think we've used this scripture or used this example before, but we visited, I think it was the Virginia Zoo, and Ella was really little. I think Alex was a baby, and Ella was she was probably like four. You want to talk about the tiger. Five. It was a lion, wasn't lion. it? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And if you've ever been to the Virginia Zoo, um, it's the one. In Norfolk? Is it Norfolk? Richmond. <laughs> I don't know. Why am I so confused? There? I, think, I think it's Virginia it's Beach area. Yeah, Virginia Beach. Um, but it's a, it's a really neat zoo because the enclosures are very close to you. Mm -hmm. Like, even though I imagine that you're pretty protected, I think there's a lot of... Um, Hope so. A lot of, you know, protection there between you and the animals. It doesn't feel like it. It feels like you're very close to the enclosures. Mm -hmm. And so, they had this spot where you could look into the lions. And they had a wide open space where they could roam. And then they had like these bars coming down. Well, you know, Ella was little. And she's like looking through. Well, there's bars. And then there's a separation. Probably like a ravine or something, I think, mm -hmm. that separated. Yeah. And then the lion was on the other side of it. But it looked like it was a little bit closer 
than it really was to us as parents of a four-year-old who was peering through. Well, the line just happened to be up and awake and really interested in his audience that day. And he was roaming back and forth between that opening. And he was just looking at Ella and he would come back around and he would look at her and he would, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I just remember how eerie that felt. And that when I read that scripture, that your, your adversary, the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking who made it. That's what I think of. He's watching. He knows the next move. He's very cunning, you know, and how does, how does he know those things? Pastor talks about that. Like, you know, our enemy knows the information that we give to him. See, there's a, there's a, a leaker. There's somebody leaking, um, information, information. to the source, you know, and so that's Usually typically us, right? <laughs> it's typically us that are, are saying, um, from our words, from our actions, you know, things that we are struggling with, areas that we're weak with. Well, guess what? Your adversary, the devil, he's listening. He's making the count because he's got an all-out battle planned against you. And he's studying his prey. He's studying his right. enemy, right? Well, when, you, when you're when you at war and you want to win, there is no, there's no rules. You, right. you take whatever information, whatever right. upper hand you can get, whatever higher ground you can get, and you use that. Yeah. To your advantage, you don't you don't fight fair ever. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So at the same time, then we have got to be taking advantage too of our enemy and planning, putting together our battle plan. You know, the Word of God mm -hmm. tells us right there to be sober and be vigilant. Um, so, in keeping with with Tim's cool. Um, Oh, you did an acronym. I did. I did an acronym, and I didn't plan on it. I didn't plan on it. It just happened. Um, but yeah, as I was listening to Pastor Roger this morning, I was thinking battle plan, battle plan. Of course, I thought plan, P L A N, and then the yeah, the Holy Spirit just dropped it all there. But so that's what we're gonna, you know. Acronym. I know. I feel like a copycat. Um, but battle plan. So we are going to formulate a plan. And so, P for plan, of course, is to pray. And that's where we stopped in the armor of God last week. And that's where I was like, oh, but, you know, we didn't, we really didn't talk about what um, Priscilla Shire would say is the seventh piece of armor. Um, and that is prayer, to pray. So, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 You want to read that? Are you Praying read? always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Mm -hmm. So P is to pray. You know, and and um, and you know we we were we've talked about the shield and the helmet and the breastplate and the loins um, guard with truth and the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of and the peace and the sword of the spirit, you know, and then chapter, I mean, then verse 18 talks about and praying. Hey, Hazel. Um, so, you know, it also, in that, in that verse specifically, it talks about being watchful too. So as we're praying, as we're planning and we're praying and we're being watchful and Matthew 26, 41 I think I have them marked. I don't know if I have that one marked. Um, I may not have that one marked. But Pastor Roger also used this scripture this morning when he talked about Peter. Then how, you know, he let his guard down. 2641. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The Spirit... Indeed, is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, so watch and pray that you not enter into temptation because, yeah, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And, you know, in that scripture, Peter let his guard down. Peter had lots of faith. He was, you know, the first to to stand up and, and to, you know, let the Lord know that he believed, but he was also 
you know, a lot of times the first to fight. act, <laughs> to fight, <laughs> to attack. I, I feel like a lot of times I have a lot of Peter in me. Um, but yeah, <laughs> says, yes, you do. Um, so the P in plan, our plan is to pray and, um, and to be watchful because we don't want to, to give in to that temptation. Okay, and then L in our plan is to listen. In John chapter 10, verses 27 through 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Yeah, I love that. That's, that's one of my favorites. So, you know, we're, we're listening. Mm -hmm. Um, not just talking, but we're listening. So, you know, it's easy to just pray and pray and pray, but sometimes we forget the listening part. And I love the example. I'm not sure where it came from, um, but I've used it before. Is that, you know, say we go to a doctor and um, we have, you know, these lists of problems, these things that we want to see the doctor about. And we tell the doctor everything that's going on. And we say, can you please help me? You know, I've got this going on, that going on. And and the doctor has listened to, to everything that we've told them. And then we just get up and we walk out. And that would be kind of weird, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went to the doctor and we've told him everything. And then we just got up and we left. And we wouldn't have had any instruction. And so sometimes we do that in our prayer life, in our walk with God, is that we just like, we dump everything on God. Like, Lord, I need help with this. I need this. I need this. I need this. We just lay out our long list. And I mean, I've been guilty of doing that. As well, we lay this long list out and then we don't take time to really sit at the feet of Jesus and to listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do. And we say, well, God's just not speaking. Well, did you did you hang out around you right. know, to hear what he had to say? I mean, I'm like I said, I'm talking to me too. Um, but that scripture right there, that's what it says is that his sheep. No, his voice. Mm-hmm. Um, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand that's right so you know we are he's our shepherd we're his sheep we know him we know his voice and um, we know his voice because we are listening we are listening to him so P pray L listen and I love that part that and no one will ever snatch them from my hand you know, no matter how hard the battle gets, no matter how rough that fight is or how many battle scars you have, you, you know that you belong and that there's nothing that's ever going to, to snatch you away from, from the hand of God. And then Proverbs 19, 20, you don't have to go to that. I, I wrote this one down because I don't think I marked it, but it says to listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. So, you know, part of having a good plan is to have the instruction of what to do. So as we listen to God, as we pray and we listen to him, he'll give us that instruction. I think of another verse, um, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, is trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Right. And we know that God just gives us promises over and over again in his word that he's got us, he'll take care of us, but we've got to listen to him we've got to trust him um and why wouldn't we want to why wouldn't we want to he's he's the creator of this world he wrote the book why wouldn't we want to listen to what he has to say so that's p and l in plan and then we have the a in plan which is attack and that's ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 that we're going to go to for that Six verse twelve. For we do not wrestle against the flesh <laughs> and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rules of darkness of the age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. I I have to, you know, this one is I I guess maybe one that I've had to remind myself of a lot <laughs> in my walk with Christ, a lot more in the last few months because <laughs> they want to wring their necks you know what i'm saying <laughs> but that scripture says we don't wrestle with flesh and blood you know it's not it's not your co-worker that's your enemy right. it, it's not your your husband or your wife that's your enemy it's not your children it's 
It's not your in-laws. It's not the lady at Target. It's not the lady at Target. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not the government. Um, but it is. It's not the waitress. <laughs> so, we could go on and on. It's not the waitress. It's not that person that cut you off in traffic. Yeah, you guys can fill in the blank there, right? We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, rulers of darkness, wickedness. Spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly yeah, places. Yeah, in heavenly places. So, who's your enemy? It's the it's darkness. The devil, that's right. Mm -hmm. And that that's that's where the fight is. That's, that is where the attack is. That's now, where you have to know when to swing your sword. Yes. That's right. Got to know when to swing it. Yeah. And who to swing it against. And who to swing it against. And so we really have to, that's where that prayer and wisdom, um, prayer and wisdom and listening really comes into play. Because if you haven't prayed and you haven't listened and you just start attacking, guess what? The plan falls apart. That's right. Um, that prayer and that listening has got to come before attacking or we're going to be attacking the wrong thing. And a lot of times we do want to go after one another. Well, they wronged us, so I'm going to get them back. I'm going to take care of this myself. Well, no, you know, the Word of God says that vengeance is mine, and yeah. I will repay, says the Lord. So sometimes it's hard, but attacking might mean something different than we might think. And go to Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. Sometimes attacking means... Yeah. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we say it best when we say nothing at all. Oh, the I smile on so your much. face lets me know. <laughs> you know, it's not Sunday school with Tim and Jen unless we go sing a little. Um, but isn't that true though? Sometimes our attack is to be still mm -hmm. and not say anything. And the word of God says right there, the Lord will fight for you. Well, you know what? When we put on that armor, and I was thinking about that as we've been going through this, this series, the helmet protects, the, the loins are girded with truth, the shield is for defense. Um, you know, we've, we're protecting, we're covering ourselves. There aren't a lot of times it says, okay, now run an attack. Let's get them. Right. <laughs> you know? We're protecting ourselves. God is fighting for us. Well, I mean, even as we talked about the sword, the sword is is also not only deep offensive, but it's yeah, a defensive that's right. piece of armor too. That's right. Yeah, and it's God's word. Um, I just didn't really feel like it would be complete without sharing the story, but it made it came up last night, and it, you're gonna laugh when I tell it. But it made me think about it here too about the the Lord will fight for you. Just be still, and you said some. You gotta know when to attack. Mm -hmm. So we've been watching Andy Griffith again. Every now and then we like come back around oh. to good old Andy Griffith, and it's it's something that our whole family can watch and and enjoy. And you just don't get better than. You know, that's right. Then Andy and the Griffin. Darlings, yeah, and the Darlings and old Ernest T. Bass. And so, we were watching old Ernest T. Bass last night. I feel like I'm my dad right now. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so, like, Ernest T. Bass. And oh my goodness, my dad loves Andy Griffin. But we were watching that, and Ernest T. He was he got offended, you know, and he was mad, and he was ready to tear up the city, and he was coming after Sheriff Andy because it was all his fault. He wouldn't let him. They wouldn't let him join the arm any, ar, army, and he wanted his uniform. So he here he goes again, throwing rocks through windows. That was his main attack weapon, was throwing rocks and bricks through windows. Well, Barney is ready to go get him. He's ready to hunt him down and let him have it. You know, and Andy says, now wait, 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 wait. You know, it's not worth it. It's not our, this is not... This is not the time. This is not, we, you know, if we go out there running around, we'll never be able to do what we need to do. We just need to wait and, and be still. And Andy was so calm. And I looked at Timothy and I said, that's me and you right there. Yeah. 
I am Barney in the spirit so often and he's Andy in the spirit. And I'm like, but they did this, this, and this. And you know, I'm just ready to retaliate. And he's like, now, now, is that really a worthy cause to fight for? Now, I mean, is that, is that really going to make the difference down That's the true. road? You know, and, and most of the time, you know what? I will. I'll, I'll put my shaky little gun down. <laughs> one bullet. Your one my bullet. one bullet, I'll put it back in my pocket or I'll hand it to him. <laughs> and I'll say, all he wanted was a uniform. Yeah, that's that's right. All he wanted was a uniform. So he could get a girl. Yeah. <laughs> he got the uniform. That's right. <laughs> and what happened? Old Barney, who wanted to attack him, was standing ended there up, in, in a raincoat. Rain <laughs> 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 but you know, we got to know when to attack. And, it, and because Andy was. Very just level-headed in that, and he waited, and he listened. He listened to what mm -hmm. Ernest T. Bass really wanted, and the the situation was resolved in the end. But had had they done it Barney's way, and they went after him, and just like, and they did try to lock him up, but he kept getting out, you know. Um, somehow. Yeah, somehow. Uh, but you know what? Just because they he was wise and you know they didn't do it Barney's way had they done it Barney's way and upset him he might have done worse so sometimes we have to be still and most of the time that's what required of us is to be still there's been a lot of things that have happened lately and I, I've taken a big step back from social media so if you if you say anything on there other than our same school class and business stuff I'm I'm gonna be a little absent for a while but um you know, I've had to take a step back from that because even though it's a worthy fight, even though it's a good thing and there might be stuff that you're passionate about, it's easy to get carried away with mm -hmm. with what you believe in. And it may be the right thing that you believe in, you know, and on a moral stance. Um, but even throwing rocks over the right thing or even getting worked up, not even throwing rocks, but even just getting worked up, um, over something somebody doesn't believe like you do or they don't see things like you do you know even though we just talked about we don't wrestle with each other but it's so easy to just just be so mad at that person and just like not like them and not want to hear what they have to say and want to unfollow them and and block them and you know it's just it's easy to just get in that um sort of a mindset and that's not what the lord wants us to do he doesn't he doesn't want us to to live divided and pastor talked about that this morning too you know how mm -hmm. um division this is it's dividing and ruling is what the enemy wants and um and that is not what what god did not come to divide yeah. us you know he came to to bring us together and uh, to give us eternal life so p pray l listen a attack and then in <laughs> I'm still going to go with the word that I really felt this morning was notwithstanding. And um, I had to look that one up, actually. But notwithstanding means in spite of this or nevertheless. And go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. And oddly enough, notwithstanding, if you have a King James Version of the Bible notwithstanding appears 37 times. So, mm -hmm. it's, pr I thought I did. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I can find it. It's my um, book. I can find it. <laughs> it's right. Paul wrote it to you. Right. So, um, so you can nearly what? 417. And notwithstanding is one word too. It's one long word. Okay, so yeah, this is the new King James, but I wrote it out in what the King James says. So you wrote in your Bible, <laughs> notwithstanding, notwithstanding, <laughs> the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of a lion. So Paul was writing to Timothy there, and he said, Nevertheless, you know, all this has happened and I have been in a fight. Here I am, you know, pretty much giving up for dead. Don't know if I'm going to be making it out alive. But nevertheless, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. But then he also said, and 
I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. So Paul was talking there that he was delivered. Nevertheless, even though he went through a lot of stuff, even though the battle was hard, mm -hmm. nevertheless, notwithstanding, in spite of all this, <clears throat> God strengthened him and carried him through. And, you know, we have to stand firm when the battle rages and when we have stood our ground and we pray and we've listened and we have attacked, whether it be um, through prayer and the word or whether it be just saying nothing, you know, and letting God fight for us, that even when we've done all, what is it the pastor says, even though you've done all you know to do, stand. stand. And so notwithstanding, I had written down some things that never back down. Maybe I should have used never for in. <laughs> never back down. Never surrender. Never give up. Never give in. Never quit. And never yield. Never retreat. Never retreat. Go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> never back down. Oh, I said that one. Never let the enemy win. <laughs> Nevertheless. Nevertheless. So, you know, even though it might seem like you're alone, you know, I'm sure Paul felt that way. Mm -hmm. he He'd been prison. forsaken. He was in prison, prison abandoned. Long I mean, yeah. Time. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm sure he felt like, you know, this is it, man. I don't have anybody that cares anything about me. And, um, but nevertheless, notwithstanding, it was the Lord who stood with him and strengthened him. So, mm -hmm. Be encouraged today. You've got the armor. You're equipped for the battle. And now you have a plan. How are you going to use that um, to fight? Because we are in a fight. Very much We're so. not. We should not be just sitting back saying, okay, well, whenever this happens or this comes, then we'll deal with it. Because it, it's here. It's coming. And um, we've got to stand watch over our families. We got to stand watch over our children. Um, they are in a battle too. Yeah. And um, this house has been in a battle. <laughs> yes. For sure. Um, and it just seems like there's just so much despair and you know, so much unsettledness because we, our world is very unsettled right now. And your kids are being fed a lot. A lot. Um, by friends, even though they're not, they're social distance or whatever on social media, on YouTube. YouTube. I mean, they're coming across things where people are having opinions or they're seeing you watching the news mm -hmm. or you talking about things that are going on in the world. And it's really having an effect on, him, on them. I know it, it has in our house. We've really had to be careful. Um, you know, and our kids are like, please, when we go... You know, even like church stuff. Can we just not talk about, you know, COVID? Or can we not talk about all the mass stuff and all the stuff? And it really is its weighing on them. And I mean, um, it's it weighs on us as adults. We've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. But we know how to handle it a little bit better than children do. Um, we we have ways that we can escape. And, you know, when, when baseball season is canceled and football season is canceled... And school's canceled. They don't know how to deal with that. Because yeah. they kids really need routine. They need structure. And so when things are a mess like that, they, they don't know how to handle it. Um, but pray for them. And um, if anyone has Netflix, you need to watch The so Social Dilemma. The Social Dilemma. Okay. We'll look that one up. We don't have the, Netflix. Is that the one with uh, <coughs> Kurt Cameron you wanted to watch? No, the one with Kurt Cameron is, um, it's an old one too. It's, uh, oh, what is it called? Somebody on here. something about social yeah. something or other. Yeah, the social dilemma. I don't think that's the one with Kurt Cameron. I'm guessing that's a different one. But, um, anyway, yeah. We'll have to look that one up in the mm -hmm. Um, did you think about how we wanted to do the... Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> okay, well... Monumental, well, yeah, Monumental was one. We've seen that one, but this was another one. He did one that was just on, on uh, social, on media. social media. And yeah, Monumental was great. I loved it when he went to, what was it, Plymouth Rock, where they had that uh, mm -hmm. statue up there. Yes, that was that was, pretty, that was, was really one of the cool. best ones I thought he had ever done. I'll actually like to go back and rewatch that one. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. It'll come to me after we get off here. Let's go look it up. Very eye-opening. Well, yeah, Monumental was. Um... 
Okay, so we want to give away something to our class today um, to a very, to one family. And the way we're going to do that, I guess this will be okay with you. <laughs> You're okay with whatever I do. Mm -hmm. um, we have a family four pack to Owens Farm um, that we want to give away to one of you today. Um, this would be good for you and your spouse and two children. Of course, if you have a bigger family, you can go, but it will cover a family of four. Um, and it will be all day access to the farm. Um, I know they're they're doing some things connect. a little different. Connect was the name of that, Kirk Cameron. And it's only two years old. Okay. Um, but they're doing some things a little different, but I, for the most part, I think everything is up and running. Um, so I talked to Patty Owen over at Owen's Farm, and um, she said everything is good. They're open on the weekend. So we want to give that away. We want to give away a, a family, um, what, what do we call it? Family fall fun. fun day or something. <laughs> I don't know. We had it all written out last week. So this is what you have to do to be entered to win. I want you to tell us in the comments what is your favorite family activity to do in the fall. What is your favorite fall family activity? <clears throat> and if you will fall family activity. Did I say it right? Yeah. Oh, y'all know. You you women know. <laughs> What is something that you that you and your family love to do during the fall? Not only will this give us an idea of things we can do for our with our families, but it will enter you into this giveaway. And so if you'll comment that between now and tonight at midnight. Why are you staying until midnight? No, we'll we'll just see in the morning who Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to the end of the day to comment that because some people might get on here late, you know, later and watch. Twelve oh one. Yeah. No, 12 when you're too. No, I'm kidding. So tomorrow we will draw from those that enter. Oh, see, they're already doing it. Okay, cool. All right, well, we love you guys. Remember October the 18th, if you tuned in later, we, um, we're going live. We're going live, live. Live in person. It's Saturday mm -hmm. night. <laughs> Live, live from Danville. <laughs> it's Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be back in, in church, back in room 201. All right. We love you all. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And join us again next time. See you again next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.